Good morning. I am Mark Hauer, Provost and CEO of Antioch University Los Angeles. Welcome to the 2021 Antioch University Los Angeles Commencement Ceremony. Thanks to all who have joined us today. We gather together as a community to celebrate the accomplishments of our students and in so doing to affirm our shared commitment to a society, economy, and environment that works for all. Now our campus is located on what is Culver City now. And when we have an important event, we have a tradition of reading a land acknowledgement to remember our role and place in our larger story. Antioch University of Los Angeles resides on the traditional and unceded territory of the Tongva people. These lands and the Tongva people continue to carry the stories of this nation and the people's struggles. With this land acknowledgement, we take a step toward learning these stories and identifying ways to join in decolonial and indigenous movements for sovereignty and self-determination. Now to our honored students, I want to extend my warm congratulations. You have worked toward this day for many months and even years. Your hard work and sacrifice have allowed you to realize your goals. I am delighted with this ceremony, you will be joining our community of Antioch alumni. While we celebrate your achievements, it is also true that the success of individual students rests on the support of others. Therefore, I want to take a moment to acknowledge those who have helped each of you to succeed. Family and friends, we know that without you, the graduates would likely not have reached this point. Your assistance, support, and love have been essential. I know I speak for all of the student candidates when I say thank you for all you've done. The faculty have, of course, been a big part of your learning journey. They have built the curriculum, shared their expertise, and encouraged you to do and be your best. The faculty are in a Zoom room at this moment. Faculty, please be recognized. This day is also significant for staff, administrators, and all who work at Antioch. Commencement for us is a powerful affirmation of why we do this work. I want to recognize Sandy Lee, our Chief Operations Officer, whose careful planning and coordination of this event makes it possible every year. Thank you as well to the Commencement Committee, which includes Andrea Richards, Susan Nero, Lauren Moran, Francis Hernandez, and Regina Brooks. It is my honor to introduce our first speaker, the Chancellor of Antioch University, William R. Groves. Chancellor Groves began his tenure in 2016 after first serving as the university's general counsel. As chancellor, he has focused on advancing our reputation as an innovator in higher education and in institutional growth with the purpose of reaching our full potential as an academic institution dedicated to advancing social, economic, and environmental justice. Please welcome Antioch University's Chancellor, William R. Groves. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our graduates, their families, their friends, our faculty and staff to the 164th Annual Graduation Ceremony of Antioch University. As Chancellor, it's great to be here today and share the occasion with you, even if it's by Zoom. And unfortunately, because I'm pre-recording the message, I can't even see your happy faces. But somehow I know you're happy because this is your last Antioch Zoom session. But despite the circumstances and the lack of some of the pomp and circumstances of an auditorium setting, I'm honored to be one of the first to congratulate you. You're graduating today. You did it. And wow, you did it at a really difficult and unusual time. I think the only thing we did not experience was a swarm of locusts. But for those of you in New England, you persevered through a disastrous flood of your campus. For those of you in California, you persevered through wildfires. 
and mudslides. And for all of you, you persevered through a global pandemic, the resulting economic downturn and recession and closed campuses and innumerable Zoom meetings. But most importantly, you have persevered through a very difficult period of American history, a period marked by significant, pervasive political and social upheaval in this country. I've written too often over the past four years about those topics and various shocking, disturbing and appalling events, too numerous to mention here, each time arguing for our Antioch values and each time hoping, hoping that it would be the last time I would need to write such a letter that change would come. And in part, it has come, but there is clearly much work to be done. Today, it was a mass killing of eight additional souls in Indianapolis, not far down the road from here. So all I wanna to say today is that I hope you feel you have a family here at Antioch that shares your values, the faculty, the staff, your fellow students, and that they've helped to support you and your journey of growth over the past several years. I hope too, that you feel that you have a lifelong association now with an institution that supports your values, that stands shoulder to shoulder with you as you continue to make a difference in the world. Institutions are important. They're important for any democracy. And our institutions give us voice in powerful ways that we individually may not have to promote social justice and change. So thank you. Thank you for choosing Antioch and supporting Antioch University and for now joining its 70,000 alumni in this important mission of social, economic, environmental, and racial justice. It will take all of us. So as you graduate today, I'd like to recall the remarks of Martin Luther King Jr. made at Antioch's 1967 graduation ceremony. There on the lawn of Antioch College campus with his wife Coretta next to him, he made the following remark. Change does not roll in on the wheels of inevitability but comes only through continuous struggle. Be part of that struggle. And please know that Antioch University is standing there with you as you work to serve others and win victories for humanity. We're very proud of you. You are all lifelong Antiochians now, and we know you've got this. So have a great graduation day, celebrate your achievements. And again, thank you and congratulations. I am very honored to introduce our next speaker, Congress member Karen Bath of California's 37th Congressional District, which includes Culver City. Congress member Bath serves on the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, where she is the chair of the Subcommittee on Africa, Global Health, and Global Human Rights. Congress Member Bass has also served on the Judiciary Committee since 2012. Her work on this committee includes passing comprehensive criminal justice reforms, including the First Step Act, and reforms to our prison system, particularly the treatment of women in prisons. Congress Member Bass also helped to pass the Equality Act of 2020, which would provide consistent and explicit anti-discrimination protections for LGBTQ people involving housing, employment, and other important life matters. In February 2021, Congress Member Bath introduced a landmark policing reform bill, the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. And ever since, she has been working with a bipartisan group of senators to ensure successful passage in the Senate. Congress Member Bath also served as the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus in 2019 and 2020. Congress Member Bass has been a tireless and effective champion for a just, equitable society. Antioch University is honored that she will be speaking to our students and guests today. Please welcome Congress Member 
Karen Bass. Hello, soon to be graduates. I am so honored to be here with you today and proud of everything that you have accomplished. Each of you were challenged by circumstances that we would have never imagined, but you persevered. A pandemic could not stop you and here you are, soon to be graduates of Antioch University, Los Angeles. To all the family, friends, and guests who are here today, thank you for the support that you have provided that has been critical to your graduate success. For those of you who are graduating today without that kind of support, please know and remember that your success is a sign of strength and power as well as academic achievement. And of course, we are all thankful for the faculty and staff whose work in front of the classroom or the computer screen <laughs> that helped you arrive at this moment. For the current and future leaders that we know you all are, we honor you and for the families, friends, faculty and staff that help you, please take a moment to say thank you and thank them for all that they have done to get you to this point. For decades, Antioch University has inspired thousands of young people to serve others and to make positive change in the world. You are so fortunate to be graduating at such an important moment in our history. Our nation is at a crossroads and you, all of you, have the opportunity to help determine which direction our nation should go. Will we become a more inclusive society? Will our diversity be viewed as a strength or will it be viewed as a threat? Will we expand our democracy by making it easier to vote or will fear of the fact that in a few short years, the country will become like California where people of color are the majority? Will fear of this reality lead to an all out assault on the right to vote so people of color cannot win elections and voting becomes so difficult, hours and hours in line that people become discouraged and the new minority consolidates its power and rules for generations. After the 2020 election, over 30 states passed laws making voting more difficult, reducing the hours, making it illegal to give people in line water or food. For you or for your generation, the question is, how will you respond? Will you pick up the baton and join the fight for the right to vote? I do have to say, I admit that it's sad that we are having a conversation about the right to vote in the 21st century when voting should be as easy as using an ATM machine. But you now have the ability to influence the, directory, the direction of the country should you choose to get involved. Now I'm hopeful that the education that you received at this progressive institution has fired you up and made you ready to get involved or that your education here has encouraged you to stay involved because I do know that many of you come to this institution as activists. We need you. The last four years has taught us some very tough lessons. It's taught us that you can win significant change, but if you don't stay involved, the change that we fight for, the change that we win can actually be reversed. Voting rights, a woman's right to govern her body, health care, etc. When we have been successful in moving our nation forward toward becoming a more just society, it has been because of massive involvement from average citizens. But when we have won, I think we've assumed our victories will be permanent. But the tough lesson was, if we are not active citizens and consistently hold our government accountable, we shouldn't be surprised if an individual comes to power who does not have the entire nation's interest in mind. That one individual can actually damage our nation's institutions and damage our image around the world. So it's up to us to never let this happen. I also realize the struggle for social and economic justice never ends because our victories can be taken away. So the battle for justice is ongoing. And so one of the most important responsibilities of my generation is to do everything we can to support, nurture, and pass the baton on to the next generation of leaders. There are many critical issues that await you, but I want to take a moment to describe one of the issues. Please help our nation develop the ability to constructively discuss race without the traditional guilt and deepen our understanding beyond the individual behavior or beliefs of individuals, but dig deeper, go below the surface, examine and change our institutions, healthcare, education, housing, etc. We all watched an awakening take place in our country last year after we witnessed George Floyd being slowly murdered. For the first time in my life, 
the general public finally connected the murder of a black man at the hands of police with a structural problem in our country, a tragic reality African Americans and other people of color have faced for generations, but sadly was not believed or acknowledged until George Floyd's murder. Brutality or death at the hands of police was assumed to be deserved or dismissed as the result of bad behavior of an individual officer, not a systemic problem and not connected to race. So his death led to a new awakening about race, about our nation's history. And so now there is a struggle going on over whether we should tell the complete story of our nation's history or whether we should just tell the nice, comfortable stories. Should we just talk about George Washington's cherry tree? Or should we also include the fact that he owned 300 human beings? I believe our nation's history should include the good, the bad, and the ugly. Our history should include everyone's stories, not just the stories of one group. The fight over whether to tell the whole truth is taking place in communities around the nation. Our country is a great country because of our collective history and because we are on a never ending journey to make our country stronger and to make sure the American dream can be shared and enjoyed by all. So we shouldn't be afraid to tell the entire truth. This is just one example of a challenge I hope some of you take on. Reforming our criminal justice system so we do not continue being the nation that incarcerates more people than any country on earth. Please join the movement to change this. The US should be the world's leader in saving our planet from destructive climate change. And right here in our city, it is a tragedy that every night in Los Angeles County, more than 60,000 people are sleeping on the streets. So graduates, take your pick. So much to work on awaits you. Graduates, you have studied, worked, sacrificed. Now it is your turn to go out into the world and make a difference. Now it's your turn to dream. The truth is the nation needs you to dream and we need you to dream big about how we will tackle the nation's greatest challenges. We need you to take on the health and economic disparities laid bare by the COVID-19 pandemic. We need you to go out and to protect voters from having their rights infringed upon around the country. We need you to push for reform so that people of color aren't killed or brutalized by police. We need you to make connections that strengthen our country's relationship with others, fostering a peaceful understanding across cultures rather than irrational hatred for those who do not look like us or speak the language we speak. So our future is in your hands. The group of graduates on this call today, you control where we go from here. I know that might add a bit of pressure on you, but it's because we have confidence in you. Over the past four years, you were taught to reject passive participation in our society. You were taught that when you see someone who needs help, you lend a hand. When you log off this virtual ceremony, know that this is now your charge. <laughs> know that your community is counting on you, but I know that you will step up and meet the challenge. If you're not sure where to begin, identifying a problem in the community and set out to solve it. Just identify an issue. And now if you live in a community where everything's just perfect, remember that so many other communities face challenges that need your expertise. There are an infinite number of ways you can become involved and take responsibility for our collective world. So hopefully now we all understand that it is our responsibility to vote in every election, but I do hope we've also learned that just voting is not enough. We must consistently be involved in neighborhood associations in our city, our state, and our federal governments. Now, we often complain about government, but all too often we don't think it's our responsibility to participate in government. So I challenge you to go out and become leaders in whatever profession you choose. In the professional organizations, make sure you, you join them and ensure that quality and ethics are upheld in your chosen field. So ask yourself these questions. What will be your purpose? What will be your mission? The future is wide open. 11 years ago, I addressed the class of 2010. Our world has changed in unimaginable ways since then, but the need for dreamers is the same. So dream big and don't allow anyone to put your ideas in a box. I always say, don't just think outside the box. Why don't you join me in flat out rejecting the idea that the box exists at all? There are no limits, no boundaries to what you can imagine and what you can achieve. 
The class of 2021, you are the first class to graduate in this country, having endured a full year of a global pandemic in more than 100 years. Class of 2021, this sets you apart. You have already endured incredible obstacles, and I know that nothing now will hold you back. Use what you've learned here to make the world a better place. So to the class of 2021, congratulations. Enjoy your day, take a short break, then go out and change the world. Thank you. Antioch University of Los Angeles is blessed with exceptional and dedicated faculty members. This year, three senior faculty members, Dr. Donald Strauss, Dr. Kirsten Grimstad, and Dr. Susan Nero, will be retiring. I have the distinct, if bittersweet, honor of conveying a small part of what they have contributed to our students and community in over 76 years of combined service as core faculty members. First, Do Dr. Donald Strauss has been an Antiochian in a variety of stages and roles. He has degrees from our undergraduate program, our MFA in creative writing, and he earned his PhD in environmental studies from Antioch University, New England. Dr. Strauss became a core faculty member in the undergraduate program in 2007, and he stepped in to head the creative writing concentration in that program. Dr. Strauss launched the MA in Urban Sustainability degree program in 2010 as the founding chair, and he continued to innovate throughout his tenure, establishing a GIS track and establishing the Peace Corps Coverdale Fellows Program. Dr. Kirsten Grimstad came to AULA as a tenured associate professor of graduate studies at Norwich University through Vermont College, a core faculty advisor and co-director in Vermont College's Masters of Arts program, and as an American fellow of the American Association of University Women. She first served as an adjunct faculty member in the BA in Liberal Studies program from 1990 to 1994. And then in 2005, she joined the program as professor and chair. Upon her retirement in June 2021, Dr. Susan Nero will have completed 41 years of full-time service at Antioch University as a core faculty member. For 28 of those years, Dr. Nero served as the chair of the graduate management programs. These included the work of designing and launching the MAN organizational management, and more recently, the MA in Nonprofit Management. Dr. Nero has also been a visiting faculty at Stanford, UCLA, and Pepperdine Universities. I want to briefly share how colleagues of these three distinguished educators described them in a recent celebration. Donald, you are a true mensch. Kirsten has a remarkable capacity to be both ferocious and kind. Susan embodies gentle, fierce wisdom. As nominated by the AULA Faculty Assembly, the Antioch University Board of Governors recently approved the granting of Faculty Emeritus Awards to Dr. Donald Strauss, Dr. Kirsten Grimstad, and Dr. Susan Nero. The university and its students have benefited from their scholarship, their love of teaching, and their abiding commitment to the Antioch mission of social justice. They will be deeply missed, and we wish them well in their well-deserved retirement. And as a small token of our appreciation for our esteemed colleagues, we present Dr. Strauss, Grimstad, and Nero, faculty emeritus stoles from the university to be worn with their regalia and signifying their honored place in Antioch's history. We now turn to recognizing our students by program. We'll celebrate the bridge program first. An important part of an AULA education is the connection made between quality education and values rooted in social justice. Since 1999, the Division of Undergraduate Studies has been living those values through the bridge program, which provides free humanities education and experiential learning for adults looking for a bridge to higher education. Please welcome the co-director of the Bridge Program, Catherine Pope. 
Thank you, Dr. Hauer. Greetings to you all. Today, we celebrate the accomplishments of our students in the 21st year of the Bridge Program. I am honored to introduce the Bridge Program speaker for the class of 2021, Luciana Ordonez. Lucy Ordonez came to Bridge last October. Over the past nine months, Lucy has been a vital part of the Bridge community. Lucy is a mother of four and a fierce advocate for economic, environmental, and racial justice. She plans to continue her studies at Trade Tech in the fall with the goal of earning a degree in human development. Please welcome Lucy Ordonez. I'd like to welcome everyone, students, staff, and family. Bridge, just like the word itself, has created a space for personal growth with guidance. And in my case, it kind of felt like spirit guides led me here to be part of this program. In the spam folder of my emails, there was this little lost invite to the most rewarding program, which I had no idea even existed. I had always wanted to give myself the dedication and the challenge of continuing my studies, but life, children, and responsibilities always held me back, not to mention the curveballs I was willing to dodge this time. This time around, I made it my goal to overcome and keep going regardless of the pain I was going through. It felt like the right time, like being in lockdown motivated me to do something I had put off many other times in my life, something so important to me like getting my education going. I wanted to inspire and motivate those looking at me, my children. This year was going to be the time for me to keep pushing and not give up. I want to thank every single one of you for your continuous support and dedication especially during these tough times we endured. In my case, two deaths within weeks of each other due to COVID struck the hardest, shaking up my entire world, and to top it off, a nine-month-long custody battle that inspired my final research paper for Bridge. Being part of Bridge, our class found the true meaning of community in one another and professors with dedication and attention for each of us. Feeling cared for, made this a special community to be a part of. Every week we had lessons filled with information that helped me open my mind to new perspectives. For example, Cheka, the professor for philosophy, led me to some very brain-busting self-discoveries. Now I feel confident that I am capable. I have the brain and the resources to keep going to finally get the path paved towards becoming a teacher or even a psychologist for children. Bridge opened the door and created a new world of possibilities. As for us collectively, my hope and aspiration for us is that we all continue and keep going step by step and jump over the hurdles life may continue to throw at us. I hope we all keep in touch and that we extend this network beyond just this bridge. Thank you, Bridge creators and moderators, for this great opportunity. It is my pleasure to be reading the names of the Bridge Class of 2021 who are participating in today's ceremony. Ana Caetano. Cindy Gutierrez. Tracy Jenkins. Yulia Cordova. Luciana Ordonez. Jenny Salinas G. Surafel Tesfaye, Meg Worthy. Congratulations to the Bridge Program Class of 2021. Hello everyone, my name is Kirsten Grimstad and I'm co-chair of Undergraduate Studies Division. My name is Mihi Hyun and I'm the other co-chair of the Division of Undergraduate Studies. Nicole Piles is a student in the undergraduate program with a double concentration in psychology and addiction studies. Nicole came to AULA after being told from a previous school that she probably would not be accepted here and should consider doing something else. One year later, Nicole decided to try anyway and is here today. She'll be continuing her education to obtain her MSW in pursuit of her LCSW. It is our pleasure to introduce this year's undergraduate commencement speaker, Nicole Piles. Welcome faculty, staff, family, friends, alumni, and prospective students. Welcome to our graduation, the graduation for the I'm conquering anything that gets in my way graduating class of 2021. 
in an unprecedented time when fear, uncertainty, and defeat crouched at our front door, we didn't relent. Every day, we opened that door, looked them straight in the face, and with trembling hands and shaky legs, unsure of what was to come before us, we walked past them until we arrived at this moment right now. This has not been an easy process by any stretch of the imagination. For the first time in our history, we may have actually matched the stories of our elders who had to walk to school 10 miles out, uphill, both ways, in the snow, wearing one shoe with no sole. Some of us have lost loved ones through this unfathomable year, and no words can go as deep as those hurts to bring healing. I believe our loved ones are smiling down on us right now and have never stopped cheering us on. We have experienced trials that made us wonder if we were going to make it, and tragedies that have turned our lives upside down. We've transitioned our entire existence to a virtual environment, figuring it out as we went, and isolated from those we love and need the most. But we've also experienced some triumphs. Our creativity, creating paths for us in uncharted territories, having virtual celebrations and drive-by birthdays, managing everybody's needs under one roof at the same time, and navigating faulty internet speeds by discovering that shutting our cameras off stabilizes streaming video. But despite this, we made it. We are here. With tremendous support from an amazing team of Antioch faculty and staff, we unapologetically pursued our dreams and proceeded with courage. Courage is not the absence of fear. To the contrary, courage is moving forward even in fear and not giving up even when every fiber of our body wants to. Antioch has taught us to use our voice, to be critical thinkers, and to stand in solidarity with those who are experiencing injustice, helping to change their narrative. I have always believed that children come into this world as a blank book, and the people around them write their stories. Those children grow up and become us. Know that your voice, your story, is your power. Use it to change this world. As I continue on with my education, pursuing my Master's of Social Work for my LCSW, I will continue to seek to be a voice of truth and a beacon of light. I am grateful to God for this day and honored to graduate with and represent this powerful, myth-breaking, world-shaking, unstoppable group of heroes, the class of 2021. Thank you. It is our pleasure to be reading the names of the undergraduate class of 2021 who are participating in today's ceremony. Trevor Amos. Christine Cho. Andriani Constanti. Isabella Davidson. Sienna Deck. Juliet Delgado. Andrew Dunn. Sarah Jean Dupre. Peter Ehrenfried. Julia Gash. Carlos Guerra. Stephanie Guerrero. Alexandra Hedison. Angela Jane Heisel. John Pontus Johnson. Megan King. Erica Malone Barker. Isaias Narvaez. Rosalind Nunley. Alberto Pineda. Nicole L. Piles. Caroline Olivia Rexroad Rose. Robin L. Robart. Sylvia Sather. 
Albert Ariola Samadeni. Tracy Simmons. Leah Torano. Clarence R. Williams. Jane Edith Wilson. Jesse Leith Norma May Withers. Travis Wood. Cedric Yapee. Congratulations to the undergraduate class of 2021. Hello, my name is Cynthia McDermott. As the chair of the Antioch University Los Angeles and Santa Barbara Education Departments, it is my distinguished honor to introduce our 2021 education commencement speaker, Mr. Tim Hand. After an extraordinarily successful career in business and advertising, as well as years of community volunteering, Tim Hand decided to start a new chapter in his life. Wanting to expand his social justice efforts and to help young people, he began researching many universities, enrolling with us in our teacher credential program, and subsequently received his credential and his master's of education degree. Tim is currently employed with LA Unified School District in the substitute division and will certainly be employed full time by this fall. Congratulations, Tim. Perseverance. If there is any word to describe the education department's graduating class of Antioch University in June 2021, this is the word. Webster's Collegiate Dictionary defines perseverance as continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failure, or opposition. This class of credential and master's graduates has dealt with a once-in-a-century pandemic which has resulted in not only teaching our own students in a virtual classroom, but attending classes as students in a virtual classroom. Many of us have never met our fellow students in our cohorts or professors in person. And yet, we have worked, struggled, and persevered to reach our goals and obtain our degrees. There will never be an education department graduating class from Antioch that has overcome as many obstacles as we have. We have worked with both the internal challenges in our studies here, as well as the external challenges of our own jobs, all combined with the societal challenges of a life-threatening pandemic that has tragically killed over 600,000 people in this country. And yet, we have a singular chance, granted to few generations, to emerge from this pandemic as leaders, role models, and educators for our students. We have the experience, forged from this crisis, to build a new world of growth, social justice, and opportunity. We can demonstrate for our students how to deal with adversity and setbacks and turn them into successes. We can help our students cope with their own adversities and to grow and thrive as successful people. We can inspire our students to be the best people they can be. And yet, will we do it? Will we rise from our own uncertainties and doubts? Will we put in the extra hours and effort to provide our students with the tools of a student-centered education that they will need after the disruption to their lives in the last 12 months? I believe we will. I believe in this education department graduating class. I believe we are capable of rising from the ashes of this pandemic to become leaders and agents of change in education. I believe we will do great things, and I can't wait to get started. It is my pleasure to be reading the names of our awesome Education Department's Class of 2021 who are participating in today's ceremony. Sarah L. Kabor, Courtney Allen, Ethan Barnes, Solomon Alexander Shehebar, Mallory Eckley, Ailey Esparza, Viviana Euphragio, Carolina Gonzalez, Jacqueline Gradilla, 
Timothy James Hand Andrea Jenkins Caitlin Claire Kramer Michelle Larian Perla Perez Juliana Pulido Shira Lee Runan Janet Ramirez Monica Cantu Robarge Lanisha Lachey Stewart Nisi Anisia Strotter Alyssa Toma Natalie Viejo Celine Van Congratulations to the Education Department's class of 2021. You have made history. Greetings. My name is David Norgard, and I chair the Antioch University Los Angeles Management Studies Department. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the 2021 commencement speaker for our department, London Jones. London is a Los Angeles native who came to Antioch in 2015 and has since earned a bachelor's degree and now a Master of Arts in nonprofit management. She is a devoted community leader who has dedicated over 10 years to the pursuit of liberation for black and LGBTQ people. London is the co-founder of Black Being, an organization with a mission to share contemplative and mindfulness-based practices throughout the South Los Angeles area and serves as a consultant of the Black Equity Collective, a group committed to strengthening the long-term sustainability of Black-led organizations in Southern California. It is my great pleasure to present to you the Management Studies Department's student speaker, London Jones. Thank you, David, and congratulations to all of today's graduates. My name is London Jones, and I really struggled to write this speech, in part because I did not imagine that I'd be delivering it in front of a virtual audience. Just three years ago, I was graduating as a BA student from Antioch, and as I sat in Royce Hall at UCLA, I found myself swept up in the excitement of the day. I watched with profound admiration as a fellow classmate delivered a speech on behalf of my program. He killed it. And I made a promise to myself at that moment that I would be delivering the commencement speech on behalf of the nonprofit management graduate program, although I hadn't yet applied. So on that day, I made two promises to myself. One, that I would continue on to pursue a master's degree and two, that I will walk across the stage and deliver the speech on behalf of my class. This visualization carried me through this entire program. When the work got tough, when it backed up so much that I thought I'd have to quit, I would recall this image and push onward. I leaned on my brilliant cohort members and professors to ask for support, patience, and encouragement. Nearly every day, I told myself that I would make it through the program, even if it looked messy, chaotic, or felt like my utter worst work. I wouldn't quit on myself. And I didn't. Just like all of us, I was unprepared for what living life during a pandemic would be like. We were all forced to adapt, to bend, to shift directions with little notice and with very few instructions. When Los Angeles initiated shelter in place, when I lost family member after family member, when the news continued to confirm that black, immigrant, disabled, and LGBTQ people are not protected in this society, I held on to the knowing that this program would help me make a positive contribution to our world. The other day, I drove past a mural that said, another world is possible. And this reminded me that the work today's graduates are doing, both within and outside of organizations, is in service of co-creating this world of boundless love and belonging. 
But before we can attain this, we must believe that it is possible. And even when faced with what seems to be insurmountable injustice, violence, and disconnectedness, we must hold on to this vision. We need unwavering vision to pull us into the future. And I look to our movement leaders, organizers, teachers, healers, and artists as those of us who are carrying the belief that another world is not only possible, but that she is on her way. I encourage all of us to hold on to our visions powerfully, no matter what comes, because we are the ones capable of seeing them through. Thank you. I am honored to read the names of the Management Studies Department's class of 2021 who are participating in today's ceremony. Lindsay Force. London Jones. Akila Morgan. Cynthia Ruffin. Giselle Tongi Walters. Liz Vidal. Beth Winton. Congratulations to the Management Studies Department's Class of 2021. My name is Monique Lopez and I'm the Acting Chair of the Urban Sustainability Department. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you the commencement speaker for the Urban Sustainability Department, Linda Reyes. Linda Reyes is a community planner, cultural organizer, and the daughter of Filipino, Burmese, and Chinese immigrants. Born and raised in unceded Tongva territory, also known as Los Angeles, Linda is passionate about community ownership in historic neighborhoods of color, and she works at LA Moss, serves on the Beverly Vermont Community Land Trust Board, and organized with Tuesday Night Project and Historic Filipino Town um, Hi-Fi Coalition. Linda received her bachelor's in international development and political science with a minor in Southeast Asian studies from UCLA, and she'll soon be receiving her master's degree here in urban sustainability. Please welcome our urban sustainability speaker, Linda Reyes. In a talk about prison abolition last summer, human rights lawyer Derricka Purnell shared, people feel afraid to let go of prisons because they feel like their options are nothing or something. It's up to us to imagine and dream of other options. To me, this quote reflects the space that Antioch's Urban Sustainability Program has invited me into over the past few years. A space of learning and stretching beyond either or thinking, beyond what's been told to us is the only way. In our program, ecological principles are a foundational concept, and in ecology, there's something called the edge. It's where two ecosystems or habitats overlap, so there's lots of biodiversity and thus lots of change and growth. One of our faculty members always encourages us to reside here, to reside in the edge where there's tension between two conflicting ideas or realities between the known and unknown, where you're challenged to sift through complexity and consider things differently. This is where you can find real transformation. For me, this has looked like grappling with the complexities of my identity to unravel unjust political realities. For example, what does it mean for me to fight against gentrification and displacement in my family's neighborhood while acknowledging that we are settlers on stolen indigenous land? What does it look like to avoid the kind of mainstream white environmentalism that harms communities of color while addressing the climate disaster already impacting my family in the Philippines and Myanmar? How can I keep my community safe knowing that society's existing accountability structures are unjust and inherently racist? All of these questions, the messiness of the edge, have complicated my thinking, making room for new ideas and strategies to emerge in my work and everyday practice. It's sharpened my orientation as an organizer to intimately understand my personal story and how it sits in the world to see how my experience as the daughter of a single, working, renting, disabled immigrant mother helps me build solidarity with others and dream of new possibilities for my community. It's encouraged me to hold on to my abstract creative thinking as an artist while delving into the technical rigidity of urban planning and policy. It's provided room for me to not only identify systemic inequities, but more importantly, to practice living into new ways of being that bring us closer to housing, environmental, and racial justice. 
While I mark the end of my master's program today, I know it's only the beginning of a lifelong journey, one that's full of more questions and more complexity, one that resides in a perpetual edge. And I'm excited to explore it all, to seek and shape transformation so we can build a world where everyone can thrive. It may seem daunting to think of all the work left to be done, but there's a sense of freedom in knowing that nothing is the way we've been told, yet it is everything we can imagine it to be. I am pleased to read the names of the Urban Sustainability Department's Class of 2021 who are participating in today's ceremony. Demi Espinoza, Paxeli Marquez, Catherine Marie McDonald, Linda Marie Reyes, Hannah Tropiano. Congratulations to the Urban Sustainability Department's Class of 2021. Hello, I am Erica Holmes, Associate Program Chair for the Psychology Department. At this time, I'd like to introduce the 2021 Commencement Speaker for Psychology, Lane Janger. Lane Janger is a filmmaker turned therapist. He proposed and helped found Antioch Community Therapy Services, which offers cost-free therapy to those who have traditionally had difficulty accessing mental health care. Previously, Lane received a Bachelor of Arts degree at UCSB and a Master of Fine Arts degree in filmmaking from NYU. He and his awesome 20-year-old twins reside in Los Angeles. Lane would like to send extra love and gratitude to his Wednesday cohort, Joy Turek, Susan Schuster Bacon, and Mom. Please welcome the Psychology Department's commencement speaker, Lane Janger. My dear cohort and class of 2021, Friends, families, partners, kids who lent us your parents, Provost Tower, Chairperson Southern, esteemed faculty, directors Susan Schuster Bacon and Grant Elliott, and Professor Emerita Joy Turek, who our class never had a chance to properly thank and honor. Thank you, Joy, and welcome. We all did this together during a pandemic. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Lane and I am an aging, gay, cisgender, agnostic, HIV positive, recovering addict, alcoholic, parent of two with learning disabilities. That may seem like too much disclosure, but for me, returning to school at 52 was an experiment. And I went in wondering, is it possible that I can be unabashedly myself? And because you, my classmates, so generously told your stories, I felt safe telling mine, and we grew together because we learned from each other. So thank you to my classmates. Another big piece of my Antioch gratitude is this kid that barely made it through high school was taken seriously when he proposed a pandemic-inspired experiment that asked, is it possible to offer cost-free therapy to those who don't normally have access to mental health services? One year later, with over 90 therapists seeing more than 500 clients, Antioch Community Therapy Services proved not only is it possible, but we dispelled an age-old psychology myth that people won't show up to therapy unless they're paying for it. Student proposed, Antioch built it, the clients came, and we helped save and change lives together. So thank you, Antioch. I remember my first day of class, our treasured Joy Turek told our cohort the story of a beach covered with stranded starfish and an old man throwing them back one by one. When a young boy happens upon the man and says, what's the point, you can't save them all, the old man throws another back and says, but I saved that one. I remember hearing that story and feeling not so satisfied. I, like the boy, wanted to clear the beach. Only then, I wasn't in a helping profession and didn't know the power and beauty of saving just one. Except it gets even better, because in our narrative therapy class, we learned that therapists can co-author alternative stories. So in my co-authored version, the boy is so moved by the old man's efforts that he runs to nearby Antioch Village, where upon hearing the boy's impassioned call to action, the Antiochians drop everything, return with the boy, and together they clear the beach. 
And that's been my Antioch experience. So as we embark on our beneficent journeys, I'd like to propose one final experiment. Is it possible we Antiochians who helped change and save lives together during a pandemic, even though some of us have never met in person, can remain connected? I hope you'll join me in this research. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2021. At this time, I shall read the names of the psychology department's class of 2021 who are participating in today's ceremony. Pamela Allen. Danielle Angel. Allie Angle. Nagin Asher. Ursula Gable. Baird, Brianna Bedron, Marion Belgray, Keith Bernstein, Lashonda Blevins, Kiara Borghetti. Angelica Bowles, Steve Bradshaw, Sam Breen, Jacqueline Bush, Chris Calandra, Rosie Kaye. Rochelle Clayton Smith, Hannah Cohen, Devin Aline Cortez, Andy Cowan, Chantal Daly, Kylie Donahue. Vivon Dugray, Jennifer Mintz Eidinger, Steve Elkins, Anat Ezra, Irina Farber, Marisol Figueroa, Emily. Ford, Kira Louise Franklin, Maya Nagako Fujiwara, Nikki Gabe, Sophie Gelvin, Manuel Christopher Gomez. Isabella Goodson, Joanna Greenbaum, Spencer Gross, Tiffany Hakeem, Amanda Holloway, Megan Nicole Chang Hardy. Jamie Michelle Hawks, Alyssa Herrera, Magda Herrera, Bree Aaron Herzog, Ivana Holiastos, Olivia Jackson. Lane Janger, Charlotte Jarvis, Kate Jensen, Julia Caton, Reed Kessler, Sasha Kalili. 
Benjamin Coleman Crater. Low Story Moon Langford. Tamar Leverin Galai. Johnny Levy. Christy Lauren Long. Emily Mariano. Gordana Marich. Maddie Maines. Daniel Mario. Megan Eileen McGinnis. Allison Mazin. Tony Monteverde Talerico. Jacqueline Morris. Rita Renee Najla Muhammad. Anna Marie Newell Brown. Susan Olson Davis. Chloe Ayao Oyang. Sarah Payne. Emily Peters. Caroline Phelps. Samantha Polk. Asia Rachitsky. Vincent A. Reed. Megan Elizabeth Rich. Christina Ritchie. Bree Roberts. Lucimara Kurchi Rocha. Nikki Rosenson. Malia Schwartz. Barbara Moraz Schwartz. Sydney Scheivel. Kyle Matthew Shepard. Brandon Simpson. Rachel Smallheiser. Nicole Snyder. Matthew Spellman. Phil Stark. Kenneth Steinhorn. Kimberly Tang. Sydney Tainigawa. Lynn Marie Virgil. Michael Lawrence Vitali. Sarah Warren. Jennifer White. Jennifer Yagubi. Congratulations to the Psychology Department's Class of 2021. Hello everyone, my name is Victoria Chang and I am the Chair of the Creative Writing Department. I am pleased to introduce the 2021 Creative Writing Commencement Speaker, Reagan Humphrey. Reagan Humphrey is a psychologist, film critic, and science fiction, fantasy, contemporary, young adult, and screenwriter. She is the inventor of the REF score, the first and only scoring system that rates films on craft and social justice. She is an MFA candidate in writing for young people at Antioch University, Los Angeles, and the editor-in-chief of Lunch Ticket Magazine. She holds a master's degree in applied psychology and undergraduate degrees in creative arts, writing and performance, and cross-cultural relations. I'm pleased to introduce you to the Creative Writing Department's 2021 student speaker, Reagan Humphrey. We are gathered here today to honor us, the Meadowlark cohort of the MFA program. 
Two years ago, in a very different June, we united. Each of us made a commitment to the written word, to each other, and to this place. We braved the shell shock of our first residency. We got into the swing at our second, and then, before our third, the world fell over. And even now, is still very much in the process of getting back up again. Our third and fourth semesters have been marked by this struggle, navigating the trauma of isolation, illness, chaos, and change. Much has been lost. We have endured and are enduring a worldwide economic upheaval, political revolution, and personal reckoning amidst a global pandemic. In the future, I imagine that we as writers will attempt to capture the complexity and texture of this moment. Who will find the words to synthesize the darkness and the strange otherworldly light? A time of despair, a time of repair, a time of dissension, a time of ascension. In many ways, it has been a perfect time for writers. After all, what is history if not creative nonfiction? What is anything if not an idea and a story someone spoke aloud or wrote down for the world to read? After the challenging years we've experienced, after the reckoning and turmoil we have witnessed, after the days we have lived and are still living through, I hope we will never underestimate the power of one person's words, of many people's words. For words have the power to rescue us, heal us, strengthen us, and lift us up when all else fails. More than ever, we are in a time when the world needs writers, when others misappropriate words, use them to spread disinformation, hatred, and fear. We must use our words to clarify, qualify, and reconnect meaning with the truth. The simple and profound truth is that we author our lives. We author our world and our world needs us. We must use our words to build bridges, to unite the divided, to pen at the impossible until it is impossible no more. And the beauty and scariness of it all is that we can start today. Friends, family, honored guests, please join me in congratulating the Meadowlark cohort on our graduation day. I am confident that as we've been guided, we will guide others. As we've been encouraged, so will we encourage. And as we've written, we will continue to write. It is my pleasure to read the names of the Creative Writing Department's Class of 2021 who are participating in today's ceremony. Kristen Ash. Molly Ashline. Caitlin Cooey. Alexandra Cruz Switzer. Jonathan Michael Erickson. Skylar Fontana. Reagan Humphrey. Christopher Ijima. Jonathan J. Anne Quinn, Susan McCarthy, Catherine McLean, Aldo Quicon, Shannon Cuenco Ferguson Rogers, Joshua Ryan. Michael Seller, Patrick Thomas, Megan Vasquez, Debbie Wright. Congratulations to the Creative Writing Department's Class of 2021. And now for that part of today's commencement ceremony that you have all been waiting for, the conferral of degrees. For this next portion of this virtual commencement ceremony, we shall cut to a live Zoom room where our graduates are waiting. Will the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Arts, and Master of Fine Arts please show yourselves? Hey. 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 Hey.
Congratulations. Hi, Mike and Marsha. Congrats. Provost Hauer, on behalf of the faculty, I present to you for appropriate recognition the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Arts, and Master of Fine Arts. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Antioch University, Los Angeles, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of Antioch University, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Arts, and Master of Fine Arts, with all of the rights, honors, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Graduates, you may move your tassels from right to left. This ceremony is nearly over, but before we conclude, we have a tradition of providing a charge to all new graduates. But first, graduates, welcome to Antioch Alumni Community. You are automatically life members. We are strengthened with your addition to our community. As Antioch graduates, you are part of a long tradition, and I want to take a moment to recount part of the story and connect it to the present. Antioch College was established in Ohio in 1852. It was a particularly challenging time in our nation's history. The country was deeply divided and the Civil War was less than a decade in the future. The founding president of Antioch was Horace Mann, a prominent abolitionist and also leader of the movement to establish public education. Man rejected the dominant norms of the time and sought to create new opportunities and possibilities for a completely new population of students. From the very beginning, the college enrolled black and white students who studied together, taught by both male and female professors. Man recognized that the benefits of a society claiming to be a democracy must not be confined to a privileged few at the expense of everyone else. This was the context when Mann delivered his famous challenge to students in his final commencement address, invoked at every Antioch graduation ceremony since 1859. Be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. Later, Antioch College graduate Coretta Scott King stated at an address at Georgia State University in February 2000, the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. Her statement reminds us that man's vision of a just society that works for and includes everyone remains painfully unfulfilled. Today in Southern California and much of the nation, everything seems to be reopening at great speed. There is much to celebrate in this, of course, Yet the pandemic is far from over, and we have been reminded in countless ways before and during the COVID crisis that an equitable, just, and sustainable society has eluded us. Before we return to normal or establish a new normal, I propose we reflect on what those concepts could mean. What lessons could be forgotten and opportunities lost in returning to familiar patterns? Might we even amplify the inequities and challenges of the previous normal? What might each of us do differently to be part of creating a better, new way of being and organizing our society? Wherever you start, you are sure to find deep patterns of racial and economic injustice but also allies who want to disrupt these patterns and build systems that unite and sustain us all. Whatever your path, whether as a teacher, a therapist, a manager, a writer, a community activist, or something altogether different, 
I know you will find your authentic way to address the injustice and inequities that diminish us individually and divide us from each other. I ask that you continue to hone your critical and systemic thinking skills to deepen your capacity for compassion and connection with others, to be an active and conscious agent of change in all you do. This is a lot to take on your shoulders, and please know you are not alone in this work. Together, we can create a community, society, and world that works for all. I look forward to joining you in this important endeavor. I want to thank you all for participating in Antioch University Los Angeles' 2021 virtual commencement ceremony. And if you wish to stay on for a few minutes, you will be able to enjoy the slideshow of personal images that were submitted by our graduates. And congratulations, class of 2021.